cameras here at Creature Features, we have a special code system to denote what kind of episode we are to present. For instance, a silver episode would be one in which we have a very good guest with a very good movie. A lead episode would be one where the guest wasn't very enthusiastic and the film was a pathetic dud. And then there is the platinum episode, whereas we have a very famous guest with a very popular film. That never happens. No, quite, you silly old grouch. Perhaps I will shutter my commentary after I pointed out that you neglected to hail the audience with your ludicrous welcome. Oh yes, of course. Forgive me. Welcome to Creature Features! That's Livingston, this is Tangella, and I'm Vincent, blah blah blah. My purpose of invoking our metallic base classification system is because tonight we shall present to you one of my most favorite and indeed rare types of episode. The Gold Version. This is an episode in which we present a film we've never shown before and where our guest was instrumental in the creation of said film. Right, Livingston? Leave me alone, I'm being quiet. Tangella? No, I indeed do not have any junior mints. Onward. Our golden episode tonight will feature a film from 2017 called Theseus and the Minotaur. It's a Harryhausen-like film that presents the endeavors of the hero Theseus, and it has a minotaur. That's all I know about it so far. But with those ingredients, you know it'll be a superb film. And joining us for this modern retelling of this Greek epic will be director Joshua Kennedy, who not only made this film, but has a starring role in it as well. He'll tell us all the backstories involved in the creation of this gem, and he'll also tell us about the recently released venture, House of the Gorgon, which stars Ronica Carlson and Carolyn Monroe. So don't go away, for it's going to be a stellar night of stop motion delight right here on Creature Features. Hey, those are mine. Stay tuned. Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do, machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Some moms travel miles for a present, but Cash's mom traveled the country for her child's life. To St. Jude. Yep. Cash was diagnosed in California with a rare cancer. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital tailored a special treatment just for him. Our research helps save kids everywhere. Want to do lunch? Well, someone is feeling a lot better. Go to stjude.org or shop wherever you see the St. Jude logo. Has it actually been a week since you've seen me and I've seen you? I think so. It's that time. It's time for Creature Features. And we've got a great show. We've got Joshua Kennedy. And you know what's special about this man? He is one of the few guests we have that's a director 
who makes movies, and he actually brought his film for us to enjoy tonight. Welcome, my friend. Thank you, my friend. Pleasure to be here. And you've like you've made a very long trip to come see us. Yes, we yes. are honored, and like we are just besides ourselves. The how, feeling how, is mucho. Thank you. Know, you. Well, you know this film and your other film, which we're going to talk about soon, are amazing. I think you're going to be like the new Ed Wood, except like a professional good one. Oh, thank you. No, thank no, you. no, no, no. It's it's all well done, and as you'll see soon, he he makes good films. Thank He's you. a filmmaker, but he's a good one. <laughs> so Thank we're going to watch your film, Theseus and the Minotaur. Yes. Theseus. I, I keep, if, if I say Thesaurus, you shall forgive me, right? I shall definitely right. forgive you. All right. Because, you know, I, I, I use a Thesaurus a lot, mm -hmm. but I've never used a Theseus. Yes. Well, Theseus, he's, he's a bit more Greek mytho mythological mm -hmm. than a Thesaurus. Mythological is good yes. on this show. Yes. Because it's, you know, the whole myth of a good show is what we produce each night. There you go. <laughs> each Saturday night. So, uh, this film, yes, you made it two years ago. Yes. And uh, how long did it take to film it? Well, it was actually, um, I would say it took the summer. It was my summer project. With A summer project? Yes. My friends, my neighbors, my dad, my mom, uh, my sister. It was a huge fam family project. You know they work for free. Yes, they do. That's, That's why nice. I use them. Right. Yes, right. yes. It keeps the budget low. All right. Any scary parts we have to warn the children about? Mm, no, I don't think so. No? It's All very right. Harryhausen-like. If you were to give it a letter, it'd be like G, P, G. P, G. P, G. All right. So any children under five <laughs> should go to bed. The rest of you make popcorn. You're going to have fun. All right. So should we do it? Let's do it. All right. Off we go. Theseus and the Minotaur. Here we go. Is it that you want, Minos? Oh, did I not tell you? <laughs> How careless of me. I have come for your throne. And, of course, the sword of Zeus. Where is it? it it's not here. Your efforts to resist me are noble, ladies, but entirely futile. Your wife shall not escape. I need only wave my hand, and the creature outside the palace walls shall destroy you and every living thing in Athens. Now, no more stalling, no more bravery. Tell me where you've hidden the sword, and I shall spare the city. I told you it is not here. Very well, I shall set up with a crown that rests upon your head. Hear me, Minos. One day the son of a god, with his arm aflame with the thunderbolt of Zeus, shall come to Athens to reclaim the throne you have stolen. One day, King Aegis, but this is not that day. up a happy 
happy child. He was strong of limb, brave of heart, and endlessly adventurous. Practically from birth, Theseus seemed to have a knack for heroism. When he was four, he strangled the wild dog that had been preying on the family's sheep and chickens. In his thirteenth year, Theseus was accosted on the road by the bandit Skyron, but defeated him within moments. The widowed queen despaired because this was a critical point in the young man's life, a time when he required not only a teacher, but also a role model. Athra found what her son had needed in the most unlikely of places, hidden beneath the cloak of a simple beggar. In the blind former warrior Gregorius, Theseus gained not only a battle instructor, not only a tutor, but also a faithful and true friend, and perhaps something of the father he had lost. Together, the queen, her son, and the blind man lived a quiet, if often challenging life in the wilds of Attica. While beneath the royal palace in Athens, the usurper Minos constructed a great labyrinth to contain his hideous minotaur, a monster that in the end not even he could control. To quench the vile beast's thirst for blood, each full moon King Minos would select five men to be sacrificed. Minos was always careful to pick the fittest of his subjects, the ones not likely to oppose him and fulfill the dead king's prophecy. And what is your name, my dear? I am Ariadne. Tell me, Ariadne, why do I find you? amidst this group of sacrifices. He's my brother. Your brother? Kairos, he's all I've got. Your arrival does complicate matters, doesn't it? I beg of you, great king, please spare them. If it is the will of the gods that I be sacrificed- The will of the gods? The gods of Olympus are the gods of the hopeless. They have no power here. I do. And I can be more forgiving than they. What say you, Ariadne? Will you give yourself to me, become my concubine, in order to save the life of your brother? My lord? Very well, if you insist. Would you do it to save the lives of all these would-be heroes? Don't do it, Ariadne. You would spare all of them? Including your brother. If you become my concubine. What say you? I will, my lord. Ariadne. On my terms completely? Yes. You will do all that I ask? Yes. Good. Bring the girl to my quarters. Come this way. Send these men to the labyrinth. Damn you, Minos! Don't lose hope, Ariadne. We shall kill the Minotaur and escape from this labyrinth. Minos shall be defeated. If not by us, then by those who follow. You fools! Who can save you? Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information.
There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Hello, I'm Vincent, this is Tangella, and we just want to remind you we've got a wonderful website. It's at creaturefeatures.tv, and at that location we've got things like previous episodes, our merchandise, we've got photographs of the entire gang, including Tangella and her hideous friend. So be sure to come see our site. You'll love it. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are still with Mr. Joshua Kennedy, and we are watching his film, wonderful film, Theseus and the Minotaur. Now, Joshua, yes. I've noticed similarities between you and the king. Um, I don't it's know. Like, it's almost like he could be your brother. I don't know what makes you think or that. Or like a doppelganger. Hmm. I, I don't see it at all. I, of course, he does not have that lovely chapeau uh, in this film. But uh, So I did not even realize you starred in it as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, my goodness, were you like running the camera and doing all... It's running like a, back and forth, yeah. You're like the one-man band with the drum and the... Right, <laughs> yes. right. No, well, you know, I'm amazed what one can do when they put their mind to something to actually make a film. Because if you were to try to make this film like in the 50s, it would require Hollywood money. Big Easily. Hollywood money and huge cameras. Yes. How big were your cameras? Tiny. Oh, tiny cameras. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See what you could do with a tiny camera. So give us the background on this. So what inspired the story? Well, I've it? always been fascinated with Ray Harryhausen and the stop motion Jason Haven't and the Argonauts. Exactly. Right. Yes. And uh, Jason and the Argonauts, Clash of the Titans. And I just wanted to make my own tribute to the great man and um, had a great... So you're about to tell me that you did the animation of the creatures as well no i didn't do that all right i all have right. a good friend ryan lengill and i shipped off all the animation to him i was going to say that's too much yes you cannot little... star direct run the camera probably sweep the floors <laughs> so you were saying you filmed this entirely in your garage that's right so where, where did you put your automobiles while this was going on you know in the neighbors oh the right. neighbor's yard yeah, they they become a bit filthy if you do that. Yeah, not because of the, your neighbors, just because outside air is dirty. But you've got a movie out of it. So exactly. So cars trade for a movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's wonderful. It balances out. Yeah. So this this chap did the special effects. Yes. All of them or just the animation? All of the animation. He was fantastic. Nice. Yes. Nice. But you've got like lasers and lightning bolts, right? Yes. <laughs> Well, I you've got to have lasers and lightning bolts in a film like this, Of course, right? of course. I, mean, I took care of the lasers and the lightning bolts. Now, Ray Harryhausen never had access to lasers, did he? I don't think so. He would probably just scratch it on the film. Yes. If he needed one. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I want to see more of this film. Let's We're keep gonna going. We're going to chat some more when we come back, but let's get back to Theseus and the Minotaur. Stay with us. Theseus. Theseus. You must always remember, whether we see it or not, each new day brings with it a new rising of the sun. As long as we have the warmth on our back, there will always be hope. But if my eyes are blindfolded, how can I see my attacker? Do you intend to blindfold my enemy as well? When one sees an enormous monster from an ancient age, one immediately begins to fear. What one's eyes do not tell you is that the monster is weaker than a willow tree. No, our instincts do that. Our eyes sometimes do not always tell us the truth. So trust in the warmth on your back. Trust in the gods. Do the gods affect your daily lives? No, but even when they do not, their power is seen in everything. In the lightning of a storm, in the ebb and flow of a tide, in the hoot of an owl, 
the power of fire, enough to suspend or trigger all spells. Theseus! Theseus! <laughs> That's the best turtle soup you have ever made. And good riddance. That was the second time that it came around. The second time? Yes, indeed. When you were out hunting three moons ago? You never spoke of this. Yes, because you were out hunting <laughs> and I was alone. Well, he'll trouble you no longer. I'm afraid that was not much help to either of you today. Anyway. Don't say that. If it wasn't for you, who would have thrown me that spear? Or showed me how to kill it? You would have found a way. How would I have done that, father? Stop calling me father. I, I'm not your father, boy. I heard a legend, uh, a myth maybe, that, that Minos stole the throne from the original king of Athens and that he and the Minotaur plague the land with black evil magic. If they are linked by the same magic, wouldn't the death of one affect the other? What are you saying? If the Minotaur is defeated and slain, wouldn't that make Minos weaker and thus easier to overthrow? Maybe, but show me the man who could kill the beast in the first place. Well, I also heard an, another legend that the true heir of Athens is out hiding somewhere on the edge of the world waiting to return. Well, well, I hope that he would hurry up and reveal himself to the world. Every full moon, Minos releases his metal-winged vulture to select another victim for the labyrinth. We lose our best men to the Minotaur. Soon, my son. Soon the heir to the throne will take its place. Yes, but how much longer can we, can Athens, afford to wait? If only, if only I could find a way to do something about it. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories.
You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Lisa, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV, and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm gonna have to block you. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked too. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. It is time to do that letter thing. Where did Joshua go? I'm not sure. Oh. Well, you know, it's good because if the guest was here, Tangela would like torture him. She does that, you know. It's terrible. But you know, she's in a good mood today because she's got new shoes. You can't even see your shoes. You know, she, she buys these beautiful shoes and then she wears these long dresses and all you can see is the tip of her toes. Well, maybe someday people will like see your shoes, but not today. Let's do mail, right? Indeed. We should do mail. Give me some mail, please. It looks, it appears you've graduated. Sir. I've graduated. Look at this. It's a, it's a graduation card because he's got, what do they call these? Mortarboard. Mortarboards. Sounds morbid. All right. May you always believe in the best you can be and have faith in the things that you do. Well, you know, I think they're shooting for a positive message and, you know, mission accomplished. Whoever you are, Eric Gerkins in San Jose. You know, so I always say, San Jose, nicest people in the world. They always send us nice mail. All right. Hi, I saw you get my letter. Uh, I saw you got my letter a few months ago. Have you heard of The Mole People, a good black and white movie? Tom, have we heard of The Mole People? We have. Is it good? It is good, but we can't get that one. Oh, well, sorry, Eric. We can't get that film because... Uh, Tom says we can't. But thank you for the lovely card, and uh, hope things are going well in San Jose. Next up. Email. You're awfully quiet today. What's up with her? Normally this time of night, she's, she's a chatterbox. All right, this one is from Jeff in Mountain View, another Silicon Valley. You know, I, I think because we're on Coffee TV 20, we reach the South Bay better than the North Bay. Perhaps. I could be wrong. I don't know much about radio transmissions and how they affect television audiences. I should study this. Maybe. Radio? All right, let me read the mail. Hey, Vincent, I enjoy the show and watch whenever possible. The movie tonight, Embryo, that was, uh, we showed that last week, I think. No, so long time ago. Is good, but Livingston as a stand-in guest is throwing me into a deep depression throws me in a deep depression as well. Next time, can you please have Tangella as the guest? She's adorable, and I think everyone would love to hear from her. Pay her a little more for the speaking part if necessary. Well, you know, that night that we did that, she was a guest as well. And, you know, she was talking between the movie parts. It's just as soon as the camera started rolling, she clammed up. So uh, maybe, maybe we'll get to talk sometime, right? Someday? So what do I get every single time? Thanks for writing, Jeff. And the last letter. One more. You know, I'm, I'm beginning to dread the last letter. You know, he's doing this to me now. He's saving the best for last, and then never the best. Indeed. All right, this one is from Jason Sackett in Alma, Colorado. Alma. I wonder if Alma Matas. It's the graduation joke. He's, he's got no sense of humor. You know, that last letter writer was right. Dear Creature Feature, it's Creature Features, there's three things I hate about Saturdays. The fact that I have to work all day, the number of idiots on the roadways, and finally, your stupid show. Wouldn't be so bad if you were on during the day while I'm at work, but where I live, we only get three channels, and at 10 p.m. on Saturday nights, the other two only offer reruns of Hee Haw 
in American Gladiators. In God's name is Hee Haw. I have no idea. You've got to Google this. Please consider moving to an earlier time slot. I've seen every episode of Hee Haw five times already, and I don't even own a banjo. Oh, it must be a banjo show or some kind. All right, well, thanks for writing, Jason. We'll see what we could do, but probably it's not going to happen. That's it. I would recommend the internet for him. The internet. Well, maybe, maybe in Alma, Colorado, they don't have the internet. It may not have been invented there yet. Uh-huh. Right? Who knows? That's it for letters. If you'd like to send us a letter, use the email address you see here. Or if you'd like to send somebody in the post, like a graduation letter, card, use the address you see here. In any case, uh, we're going to get right back to Joshua. But first, we're going to get right back to the film. So you guys stay with us. Oh, we can see him now. The bats. Combat boots. <gasps> Combat boots. A gift for you, Ariadne. The greatest jewels in all of Troy. The unbreakable string of Antioch. Unbreakable and limitless. The finest treasures in all the world for dear Ariadne. Leave us. Such gifts are poor indeed compared to the treasure you have in your heart. Accept them as a symbolic toll I pay to be allowed to tread the pathway to your heart's door. The way to my heart is not paid for with riches. Oh, come, come, Ariadne. You shall be known as the favorite concubine of Minos. I am not your concubine. Wife, then, if it amuses you. Don't touch me. It distresses me to see a creature of such beauty wearing a countenance of such dismay. You chose this life for yourself, Ariadne. You must learn to accept it. Accept it? And you set my brother to certain death right before my eyes? Oh, such a small price to pay for what I am willing to give you. Learn to forget, Ariadne, and learn to love. Never. Your will is leaving you, Ariadne. To my eyes, Ariadne. Your will is leaving you. You will do all that I ask. Oh, you witch! I could never love you. You are the chosen consort of Minos. I shall not be denied. Get used to disappointment. Pay for this! Guards! Let loose the Stymphalian bird! One day the sun of God is on the flame for the thunder purposes. Shall come back to Athens and reclaim the throne of your stomach. Oh, great Zeus, in my younger years, I was a sinner. I I do not deny that. I saw things that no mortal man's eyes should see. I watched the nymphs dance in the woods, and I gazed upon the sacred virgins of Artemis as they bathed. But I did not sin every day. Why should I be punished every day? Why have you taken from me my sight? Father, it is late. You should be in bed. I am sorry, Theseus, but my heart is aflame. Why do you say that? 
I was of no help to you or your mother today. That is not the truth. I was of no use trying to kill the beast. That was a hindrance to both you and your mother. Father, that is not the truth. Stop calling me your father. I am not your father. You have been just as good as one. You have been with us since I was a child, even after my father abandoned us. You were not abandoned. What's that smell? What's that smell? Iron. And sulfur. The Sulfalian bird! Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com.
Welcome back to Creature Features. We are still with Joshua Kennedy, director at large, maker of this film. It's an uncommon thing. You know, it's only happened three times. We've been doing the show almost three years. And it, maybe it's like a once a year treat once for a us. Once a year thing. And we don't plan it that way, but it just ends up being. It's you know, fate. Get a director, get his movie, show it on Creature Features. There you and go. we get to like talk about how it was made. Which, you know, normally with other films, we have to guess. Mm. You know, it's like, because most of the people are dead who made the film. So it's not like we can invite them over and say, how did you do that thing? Maybe with a Ouija board or something. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, Tangella knows how to operate one of those. There you go. Every time I do it, just keep saying no. Uh. Like, no, I don't want to talk to you, Vince. <laughs> no. So I gave up on that. So speaking of how did you do that, this, this sequence, this uh, stop motion sequence yes so you had somebody else do the stop motion and i wanted to know more about how that's done mm -hmm. but the actors are like acting like they're really in front of it how does that happen yes i actually am off screen holding a big pipe with a soccer ball attached to it and that's their eye line so i'm yelling at them pretend this is a giant bird pretend this is a giant minotaur and so a soccer ball signifies a giant bird yes Yes, they have to go real method. You must be European, soccer ball. I mean, you know, in America, like Texas especially, one would use a football, uh, an American football. I see what you did but, there. Uh, I would use a soccer ball. Thank and, you. you know, the, it's like black and white. It's easier to see. Thank you, yes. You know, if you've got like a brown background, American football, they'd be looking all over the place. Thank you, thank so, you. So, all right, so you're there with a the stick. Yes. And you've got a soccer ball, mm -hmm. and you say, look here. Yes. And they do that. Mm -hmm. So what happens when the monster has to eat them? Um, well, that gets a bit more complicated because obviously the soccer ball can't eat them. Um, one would hope. Yeah, one would hope. Um, but yeah, we, we, I mean, I, I sketch out all the, all the ideas beforehand and I bring them aside and say, okay, the monster is going to eat you here. The monster is going to do this. So they know exactly before we shoot it. They know it must be a bit frightening for the actors. Uh, You're about to die. You're about to be eaten. <laughs> I think You're it's about more, to become a dinosaur sandwich. I think it's more comedic for them. We're, we're all laughing. It's all you fun. Know, you know, I've noticed that about actors, professional actors. They love death scenes. Yeah. You know, I got to die in that movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? it's, uh, I, I suppose they, they get to practice before they eventually do the real thing. Yes. Right? Yeah. All right. So you were telling me during the break, you're from McCallum, Texas. Yes. It yes. sounds like a wonderful place. It is a wonderful place. I imagine, like, lots of cacti and sand. Yeah, not as much sand as you would expect, yeah. but uh, yeah, we're five minutes from Mexico. Five minutes from Mexico. Well, that must be convenient when you have to break and shoot and go get some food. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, I love Mexican food. And, you know, they make the real thing there. Yes, they do. They do. So, uh, the weather, is it inhibitive or is it... Uh, Especially when we were filming this, it was, I mean... 100 degrees with 100% humidity, it was pretty rough. Oh my rough. goodness, it's like taking a shower. Yes. So what about like things like tornadoes or hurricanes or anything like that? Um, we've been pretty good without tornadoes and hurricanes, but the heat is pretty bad. So the heat's bad. Yeah. All right. Well, we have that here. I'm used to it now. Yeah? It's, no, it's terrible here. I've seen like 109 degrees, but no humidity. So I guess yeah. they say it's all right if there's no humidity. All right, well, you know what? I want to see more of your film. Let's keep going. Can we? Shall we? Yes. Off we go. Back to Theseus and the Minotaur. Be right back. Farewell, my mother. Theseus, the gods have destined you for greatness. Fulfill your destiny, and your legend will live on for a thousand years. I shall reclaim our homeland. I shall make you proud. I am already proud. More proud than words can say. Theseus. Have faith. Gregorius! Come! What? You're coming with me. We're going to Athens. No, we're not. I need your stories, your cunning, your knowledge. Athens is a long way from here. You know the way to the sea. I do not. I knew the way to the sea. 
Well then, we'll find it together. Come. I'm not leaving here without you. What was what for? Uh, you did it again! I can assure you, I'm not throwing- Stay calm! Both of you. No need for anyone to get hurt. You can come out now, Caster. We got him. Who's that? And what are you doing? Eh, we're robbers! And we're robbing you! You would pick on an old blind man and a barely better youth! If I could see! Yeah, go ahead, old man! Reach for your sword! I dare you! Ah, try it and see what happens! Have you no honor? Ah, we did. But we lost it. To Minos. For this inconvenience, <laughs> our deepest apologies. We have no quarrel with you, truly. <laughs> Give me this. But... With the curse of Minus infecting the land, sending every able-bodied young man to mm. Athens for slaughter, mm. we had to do something to provide for our families before we leave. Before you leave? We have been marked by the Stymphalian bird. We have been chosen to be victims of the Minotaur. And only a hero with the mark of mm. Zeus mm can defeat that indestructible beast. Yeah. Then stop your banditry right now, for I am him. Oh, the son of Zeus! Thank Zeus! Oh. Thank all the gods! Oh. My name is Bacchus, and this is Castor. We are truly sorry to have accosted you, but the times being what they are, we had to take matters into their, our own hands. Have you no sons? My son was sent to Minos three moons ago. Mine as well. And neither of you thought to do anything about it. You never tried to fight back. Huh. We've tried. <laughs> Zeus knows we've tried. But even getting close to Minos is a fool's errand. The palace can only be reached by the sea. And when he came to power, Minos had all the ships in the land destroyed. Now only one vessel remains to transport the Minotaur's victims to the palace. One ship? Is that all? Is that all that's stopping you? But this ship is owned by the most vile and cruel brute in the land, Damus the Giant, uh. loyal to the king uh. unto the death. I've heard of Damus. He once was a kind man, for once Minus got him. He twisted him to evil. He may have been kind once, but now he only ferries the victims of the Minotaur to their death. But it is only one ship, owned by one man. I mean, surely we can take him. With Gregorius's cunning and knowledge of the myth, with your bow, Bacchus' sword, and my bravery, and the blessings of the gods, how can we lose? Deimos! Deimos is on the other side of this cliff. You three, take to one side of the shore, opposite of him, and distract him. Ahoy there! Hello! Are you Deimos the giant? I don't think he's going for it. Where is Theseus? There he is. Come on, Theseus. Hear me first, Deimos. Uh, My companions and I seek to overthrow Minos. I have a bad feeling about this. They say you were once a good man. And 
deep down inside, you loathe Minos just as much as we do. So what say you, Deimos? Will you sail with us? Will you sail with Theseus? Ah! Come on! So what say you, Deimos? Will you sail with us? Will you follow Theseus? Sonoma, and I have a lot of memories of Creature Features back in my hometown of Kalamazoo, Michigan. Thank you for reviving and maintaining it. I appreciate you boys and girls. Bye. Shopping at Disguise the Limit is a party, and we're inviting you to join the fun. Heading to a festival or planning an event? We are here to help. You can even rent out the shop for parties or a private photo shoot with our fashion experts. And here's something to celebrate. Disguise the Limit is now offering a membership package with special perks like access to private events and great deals on rentals. Call us for more information. Disguise the Limit. It's more than a store. It's an experience. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com.
Theseus and the Minotaur, Theseus and the Minotaur. You should have had like somebody like John Denver do the opening song, you know, with the guitar. Uh, or would it be a lute? What, what, what did they use? Uh, lute? He's not dead. Livingston says he's dead. He is. John Denver's dead. All right, not John Denver. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> Maybe like Ozzy Osbourne or someone, right? Maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that would be good. And you have an opening theme, it would be nice. Next film. Next film. Which we're going to talk about in a moment. Yes. However, in this one, um, this giant mm -hmm. was not very giant. He was, uh, you know, Livingston is taller than he was, I, I believe. Yeah, we, um, we put the casting call out for real giants, but we didn't get any callbacks. So we had to go with my friend Bo Elizondo. And I mean... You know, in a few weeks, I think we'll be having an actual giant here. So maybe we could get you two hooked up. Yeah. He's a real giant. He was on, like, America's Got Talent as a giant. He should have signed up. It's not a talent, though, right? I'm a giant? I mean, I was born tall. Yeah. This is my talent. <clears throat> no, he, he actually has a good routine. Enough about him. Let's talk about you. Let's do it. House of the Gorgon. Yes, yes. That, you know, I saw this at Creatures Con. Oh. And, you know, it had one of my most favorite people in it. Who? Miss Veronica Carlson. Oh, yes, yes, You know, yes. she has still got it. Oh, yes. It's they like, all still have it. No, but it's like with her, it's like riding a bicycle. You never forget. She's mm -hmm. just on it. Yeah. And you got to direct one of the, one of the top movie, horror movie stars ever. Yes. That must have been an honor for you. It was a dream come true. It's an honor for me to talk to you having honored her. It's secondhand it's happiness. It is. Right? No, it's, it's, it's doubled. There you go. When it comes that way. So the film, House of the Gorgon. How in God's name did you come up with that name? It's, I mean, the Gorgon, Hammer's, Hammer Films, the Gorgon, is my favorite movie of all time. Right. And I've been obsessed with Medusa and Gorgons all my life. So would this be an homage? Oh, yes. Oh. Homage to all Hammer, Amicus, AIP, all the old goody, good films of yesteryear. Well, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, you should call your production company Nail. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> Hammer... <laughs> Films. That was good. Nailed. Or screwdriver or something. Nail like films. No. But House of the Gorgon, what's it about? Yes, so it's it's your typical hammer. I know what it's about. But yes, tell well, me you know what's about. It's your typical hammer story. I mean, right. um, young woman is coming to the village of Karlstadt and has just married, uh, is going to marry her university sweetheart. And the university sweetheart uh, has two aunts that are very mysterious oh. and they wear these dark sunglasses and they live up on the castle in the hill and, and that would be veronica and carol monroe no caroline monroe and martine beswick they are the oh. two sisters veronica right. carlson lovely veronica carlson is the mother of the young woman who comes i see yes and yeah. strange things happen people are turning to stone and it turns out that the two spoiler alert the two uh, aunts happen to be the sisters of medusa the Sister of Medusa. Mm -hmm. This is like a new concept in mythology. It's t adding another layer to mythology. No, no. Yeah. It's, uh, you, one would think that Medusa would have a sister and maybe a brother and an uncle. A father. All right. So we're going to talk some more about this film because this film intrigued me and we got to tell everybody how to see it, right? Yes. It's important. But first, we're going to get back to Theseus because that story is on hold. Yes. All right. Off we go. Theseus and the Minotaur. We'll be back soon. no use in that. Well, I, I, I'm not just going to sit around here and do nothing. I brought you this. Drink it. What is it? It has no name. It will make your nights with Minos less disagreeable. Wow, that is, that is not bad. I'm glad you approve. Uh, are you not having some? Oh, no, I shouldn't. Please, I insist. Well, okay. A strange darkness and still day. 
What do you make of this, Deimos? Are you sure we are still on the right course? Listen, I thought I heard something. No, that's your imagination. No, 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 I, I heard it as well. The sun has baked your brains. No, no. I know that sound. Caster, I swear to you, there are no such things as... Sirens? But that doesn't mean they're real. Don't listen to them if you value your life. Don't listen to them. They're so beautiful. We did it! We survived the sirens! Did we all make it? Bacchus? Oh. Castor? Eh. Do you recognize any landmarks? What? What if you're wrong about this, Theseus? Don't worry. I have faith. <laughs> faith? The gods favor us! Oh, you are something, Theseus. I mean, here we are, beaten, starved, up, drowned, and you say the gods favor us. I am not going back. What? Back where? I'll slit your throat and fight you one by one. <laughs> Take it easy. Take it easy. Deimos! <laughs> Deimos! <laughs> Come over here! <laughs> if only you could see this, Gregorius. Don't touch me. Bit off a little more than you could chew this time, eh, Theseus? She may not look it, but she's quite the handful. I mean, you want to be king? You should be able to defeat a girl. <laughs> Wait, you are not with the palace? No. But we are heading that way. You're friends of Minos. Far from it. We've come to overthrow him. No matter how strong you are, you'll only find death with King Minos. What is your name? My name is Ariadne. And you're against Minos? Bitterly, of course. He killed my brother. I'm sorry. All anyone ever does in these lands is talk. Talk and dream of the Chosen One. Come to reclaim the throne. You do not believe in prophecy, Ariadne. 
Believe in prophecies spoken by men long dead and women drunk on mephitic vapors? You're just like Kairos. But what good is one delusional dreamer with a sword? We are five dreamers with swords. Oh, I stand corrected. What good is five delusional dreamers with swords up against the Minotaur? More good than one woman in a tree with a string. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Mind your manners, gentlemen. There is a lady present. What is that you're working on? A notch. For each man Minus has sent to the Minotaur. I want to feel their legacies in each and every arrow I shoot. You think you have enough arrows? Well... We have gone this far. We survived the sirens, and I did not expect to get past them. No, there's no surviving the Minotaur. Not even my son. What was his name? His name was Agathon. He was a good lad, strong and handsome, taken too soon. Elpidus. I can't say my boy was the handsomest in the crowd. But I was proud of him. I owe you all a thousand apologies. 
here I am throwing temper tantrums and railing against the fates in front of heroes fighting against impossible odds. Please forgive me. You are forgiven, Ariadne. To Agathon and Elpidos. To Agathon and Elpidos. And to Kairos. To Kairos. Kairos. Look at that. We've made Bacchus cry. No, no. I'm not crying. Not about that. About what then? <laughs> it's. Oh, it's just the sirens. They were so beautiful. Ha! <laughs> I thought finally an old seaman had found love. No, Bacchus. That is not love. No? Well, what was it then? Lust. Mm. Lust. Love. What's the difference? Oh, there is a vast difference. Love is devotion. Love is sacrifice. Do you not know why the moon grows and shrinks throughout the day? No. Then come closer, gather around, and I will tell you. Long ago, the sun fell in love with the moon, and in an attempt to woo her, he made the stars. And like many women after her, the moon was not phased. She did not give in. Oh, how I love thee, cried the sun. And to show his admiration, his eternal admiration, he told the moon he would bestow upon her a gift every day until the end of time. I will give you a piece of my light so that the whole world will see your beauty. And so from that day, he began to give the moon his light. And the moon became brighter and fuller, and fuller and brighter. Why do you do this, cried the moon? You are giving me part of your life every day. And if every day you give me part of your life, you will die. I have faith, said the sun. If my destiny is to die seeking love, then so be it. Now the gods had long decreed that the giving and taking of lights among the orbs of the sky acts sacrilege. The gods of Olympus then forbade the sun and the moon from ever communing together ever again. The sun was sent to the farthest ends of the day and became the lord of the day while the moon was sent to the darkest part of the night. It wasn't the end of their love, however. They remain lovers to this very day. The sun remained bright and blinding in the sky, giving his light to the moon, who grows fuller and more beautiful in all the passing days. to solve. It's coming back around! It's come for Ariadne!
Oh, I'm near the screen. Look into the eye of despair. Your will is leaving you. You are now under my control. Why don't you let them go? What's that? I said, why don't you let them go? Theseus. Where is the sword of Zeus? Bottom of the sea. I lost it in the attack of the sirens. Ha! Ah. You all are bigger fools than I thought. So much for your father's prophecies. My father? Yes. It was the blade of my sword that closed his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am, Theseus. <laughs> you can defeat me. Nothing is impossible. You said so yourself. You creatures. Thinking you could come into my land in secret. Thinking you could rescue my concubine. Thinking you could defeat me. Me. Minos. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, Josh, this young Ariana Grande character. Ariadne. Ariadne. Mm -hmm. She looks like Carrie Fisher. A young Carrie Fisher, yeah. And well, I would hope because this woman could not be much older than like 30, right? No, I mean, she's 22. 22? Yes, yes. Well, that's good. That means she can like go to the cast party bar thing. Yes. Events. Mm -hmm. right? And funny enough, she's actually the girlfriend of Theseus in real life. Uh, so was this like a result of your movie making this movie no they were already boyfriend and girlfriend beforehand oh so you you hired one and got the other one for exactly, free exactly uh, yes. you know you directors are a clever clever bunch mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you are you are so uh we were talking about house of the gorgon yes another film that he made that maybe someday will show as well we'll see it's too fresh. We, you know, our, our, our films, we, it's like wine. They need to be like a few years old yes. before we're allowed to show them. Nah, yeah. I, I like fresh wine, though. Mm. 
It's hard to find. So you made that film, you told me, in five days. Yes, House of the Gorgon, shot in five, five days, days in Texas. Now, how long did this film take? This took a bit, bit longer. We weren't, you because know. Because? Because. You had stop motion. We had stop motion, exactly. Right, and there's mm -hmm. no stop motion in House of the Gorgon. No, there's not. Was this like one of those things where it's like, I'm never doing that bloody thing again? No, no, no. Um, I love stop motion. It's just, it's very time consuming. Right. Yes. Right. Well, yes. you've got to like, it's like clay, right? It's, 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 and you yeah. just move them like... One frame at a time. Oh, that must be... 24 frames in one second. Well, right, but you have to like move it 24 times... For one second. ...to get one second of film. Yeah, time consuming. It's terrible. So, you know, if I were to do a film like that, the special effects would be like three seconds <laughs> of special effects. And I, I would be finished. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, I, I've moved this thing 72 times. And yeah. I would be done. No more. No more for me. <laughs> so, House of the Gorgon. Um, yes. How does one see this film? Well, we're working on a distribution deal. But um, if you're interested, it is on DVD at gorgonmovie.com. Gorgonmovie.com. All right. So, we should show that. Gorgonmovie.com. It kind of sounds like Gorgonzola. Almost, right? Yeah. Well, that movie. <laughs> and uh, DVD. Yes. Oh, how quaint. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so you could see it in like 1996 resolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about like HD? Aren't you going to make it like a Blu-ray? We're working on the Blu-ray, but you know, we just gave up the idea of doing VHS. We, we're stuck on DVD. You know, I love VHS. You can yeah. find so many films mm -hmm. that don't exist anymore. Yeah. I mean, we're kind of like the VHS of broadcast. You know, we show films that people threw away the devices necessary to view them with, right? And no, it's important. Mm -hmm. We provide a service. We're like the Library of Congress, but different. Yes. Right, yeah. right. All right, so House of the Gorgon, that's wonderful, but we're going to get back to your film. Theseus and the Minotaur. Theseus and the Minotaur. All right, let's do it. Off we go. Back to Theseus and the Minotaur. We'll be back soon. Such devotion is most charming. Now, look upon each other for the last time. No. no. This won't be the last time. Theseus will come for me. Even in the deepest pits of your labyrinth, he will find me. Ariadne, I can't. I have no weapon, not even the sword given to me by my father. It's all gone. Take this to mark your way. I have faith. Come, Ariadne. I have faith. If he must slay the beast with nothing but his hands, Theseus will come. Come, my dear. Let us leave him with these happy thoughts. Today, the great Theseus will enter the labyrinth to destroy the Minotaur.
Unchain him. Stop, Theseus, and think. Do you wonder why you do not see fair Ariadne here? Look about you. Where is she? She is at the center of the labyrinth. Live bait for the Minotaur. The game is for you to find her before it does. Go ahead, Theseus. Strike me down. I have no weapons. Do it. Do it and sacrifice Ariadne by doing so. You must choose. You haven't long to save your precious would-be princess. <laughs> Go on, Theseus. Defeat my minute. Save dear Ariadne. <laughs> Go. Wait. May you find good fortune in the bowels of the Minotaur. Hairstyling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Hey, it's Spooky Boo. Trouble sleeping at night? Need a little help? Relax and listen to some spooky, scary stories. I have ghosts and goblins, witches and demons, crazies and clowns. Check out Spooky Boo's Scary Storytime at www.scarystorytime.com. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. You can't control where it will land, only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how to protect your community from wildfires.
Hold on, Gregorius. Stay with me. Is it accomplished? Is the prophecy fulfilled? We have done it. We have made it to the end. Father. Oh, Theseus, I am not your father. Yes. Yes, you are. You are more of a father to me than anyone I have ever known. If only I, I could see your face one more time. Well, Olympus, I can see. Theseus, I can see. Theseus. <laughs> Theseus. The gods of Olympus have been kind to a dying man. I love you, my son.
The Minotaur has been slain, Minos. Your wicked spell on the land is broken. Your reign is at an end. You have lost. One day they son of a god, his arm inflamed with the thunder purposes, shall come back to Athens and reclaim the throne of the stone. Prophecy has been fulfilled. All is well, and the sea is calm. But for Theseus, there will be other adventures. And so ends Theseus in the Minotaur. You know, I was expecting a surprise ending from you, Joshua. Mm -hmm. This is like happy ending. Yeah. They killed the thing and the man gets the girl. And I expected like a twist. No. No twist. Greek mythology, it's pretty straightforward. There's a twist at the end of the Gorgon film. No? Uh, actually, yes. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. What do you think of it, Congella? You, you you can't put the film down when the director's here. You have to like it. Oh, thank she you. loved it. Thank you. Thank she adored you. it. No, she she likes anything with minotaurs. Ah, perfect. No, she, perfect. She's, she's quite good with minotaurs. Now stop doing that. All right, so uh, next up, what are you doing? Next up, we're working on cowgirls versus pterodactyls. Cowgirls versus... Pterodactyls. Yes, it's another stop motion Ray Harryhausen Valley of Guanji type film. Uh, the cowgirls are stop motion as well. The cowgirls are not stop motion. The pterodactyls we tried. Well, you know, with you being in Texas, I bet you could find real cowgirls. Yes. And I suspect you could probably find real pterodactyls as well. Possibly. Possibly. All right. Well, you know, all this DNA stuff. Have you seen Jurassic Park? Yeah. They're going to do that mm -hmm. soon, I understand. So. I, that sounds like a wonderful film. Yes. When? You start. Uh, we're, we've already started. Working on the animation right now. No, you're not working on the animation right now. You're sitting with me. That's true. But I'm not doing the animation. My animator's, you know. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he, he might he, be doing it right now. He, he, he farms it out. Yes, yes. Right. No, well, that makes sense because you, you obviously have skills in other areas of filmmaking. I hope so. Right. Because, you know, if, if, if you were to do the animation, you wouldn't have time to do the other stuff, right? True, very so, true. So when do you expect that to be finished? Hopefully by around Halloween, Thanksgiving. So this is not a five-day effort like the other one. No, no, no. No, this can take longer. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. 
Well, uh, so you'll have to come back. I would love and to come we'll, back. We'll like run a trailer or something, right? Yeah. We should run a trailer. You make trailers for your films, right? Oh, I do, yes. That's important. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a commercial for a movie. Yes. All right, that's wonderful. All right, and then as far as uh, the other movies, this is like number what? Well, Theseus is number 14. I'm on number 16 now. 16 films. Yes. Yes. My goodness, you are like the new Ed Wood. <laughs> no, well, he, uh, how many did he make? A bunch. A bunch? Yeah, a whole bunch. You officially have a bunch now. I 16 have a bunch. is, no, I think it's in a book. Yeah. 16 is a bunch. All right. Well, Joshua, you've been an absolutely wonderful guest. And thank you so much for letting us run your film. Thank you for having me. I, everyone out there is going to send us nice mail, I bet, because they love this film and they loved our guest. And they like Tangela, too. We get mail anyways because they love Tangela. All right, we will see you again soon. Yes. Thank you again. Thank as far you. as you guys are concerned, thanks for staying up and watching the show. You know, it, we really like it when you watch the show because when you don't watch the show, it's um, <clears throat> it's boring. You know, it's nice to have company, right? We like having company. We want your company next week because we're going to have a different guest, different movie, but same old Tangella. See you then. So, Josh, <clears throat> this film. You know, I imagine... You might need a cowboy or some other actor as well in this film. What do you think about maybe uh, me? I don't know about you, but she'd be great.